This time on Monkey Thieves. Bippin and the Splinter Group may have hit the jackpot in their quest for a new home. Isha turns pickpocket in her search for a snack. And Rani and the Gulta Gang elite think they found an oasis in the city. But is it too good to be true? slowly rises over the North Indian city of Jaipur. In a dusty back street, the Gulta Gang elite desperately search for breakfast. <laughs> Queen Rani wonders where it all went wrong. One day she's living in luxury at Jaipur's Gulta Temple. The next, she's homeless and scavenging the streets. The memory of being kicked out of the temple by a mob of Langur monkeys hurts. But not as much as her disappointment in her partner, Kamal. When the going got tough, Kamal didn't. Some alpha male he's turning out to be. On the other side of Jaipur, another gang of former temple residents are finally finding their feet on the streets. Bipin and some of the lower-ranking macaques were kicked out of the complex by Rani long before the Langurs seized control. This splinter group haven't found a new home yet, but they are becoming experts at finding food. Bipin spots breakfast on the move, his excited call rallies the troop. The splinter group spring into action. Eyes and ears stay tuned for danger. There's no sign of rival mobs or the city monkey catcher. The coast looks clear. Bipin leads the chase and races over the rooftop. But as he climbs down the other side, he can't believe his eyes. He's found more than breakfast. He may have hit the jackpot. Up at Gulta Temple, the new tenants make themselves at home. Over a hundred years ago, Langurs ruled Gulta. Now they're back with a bounce. <laughs> Moving into the temple is a dream after their lives in the forest. But the beautiful buildings aren't the best thing about their new residence. The food is. It's goodbye to frugal forest meals of bark and leaves and hello to a feast full of fruit, nuts, and sweets. It's even hand-delivered by pilgrims, paying their respect to Hanuman, the monkey god. Whether it's down to their elegant looks or gentle manner, the new arrivals seem to draw in more visitors and more food. The Langurs have free reign over the temple pools too. As Jaipur is in India's desert state Rajasthan, a constant supply of water is worth its weight in gold. The Langurs love it here, and they will try to stay put, whatever it takes. 
Back in the city, the splinter group gaze in wonder at Bippin's discovery. The fruit market is small, but overflows with the kind of treats they were once fed at the temple. Yash is certain a top-class territory like this must have already been claimed by another troop. The splinter group had better be quick. If they've learned one thing from their time on the streets, it's that silence is golden. Unsuspecting traders never hear a thing. Sellers wise up too late. The splinter group escape with a five star feast. They haven't eaten this well in ages. Little Dimple's cheek pouches look fit to burst. But the gang's leader, Devdan, stays alert for signs of trouble. This all seems a little bit too good to be true. On the other side of the city, Rani gives up on Kamal. If she wants food, she'll have to find it herself. The hungry gang follow her lead. Rani knows the city can be full of feeding opportunities. Macaque rules state, the harder you look, the more likely you'll find. And they might be in luck. The gang scramble over what looks like just another old fence and find themselves in the heart of an oasis. Rani stares in disbelief. The gang are in Jaipur's Central Park. It's like another world after the busy streets. Even the people seem different. No one's in a hurry. Everyone looks relaxed. Best of all, they have exactly what the gang are looking for. Food. Kamal shuffles into the park last of all. He seems resigned to take a back seat and slips off to find somewhere to sleep. Sleep is the last thing on Rani's youngest daughter's mind. Along with her brother TJ and the other youngsters, Princess Isha has a pool to play in and a new game to enjoy. The rules are simple. Silently stalk your friend, then pounce. Isha's forward-facing eyes give her razor-sharp binocular vision. And that means she can make pinpoint accurate leaps. Rani's eldest daughter, Benita, plays her own game. It may look strange, but Benita has developed a taste for flies. Snatching them out of the air by hand is something only primates like her can do. Ah. 
At last, Rani can relax. City life might not be so bad after all. Especially if she can live here. Queen Rani of the park definitely has a royal ring to it. A hundred kilometers north in the countryside, Gulta Gang exile Zamir queues for his breakfast. Zamir was deported from Jaipur for causing too much trouble. And now follows this gang of rural renegades. He learns something new every day. This morning, he has an ant catching class. Ants might be packed with protein, but he can see they're very fiddly to get hold of. Zamir takes his turn, but discovers this breakfast bites back. And as macaques have human-like skin on their hands, ant bites hurt. The troop move off in search of more food. Zamir stays close. He's still hungry and hopes they're planning a more substantial and less painful second course. But all he can see is traffic. Until one of the strangest sights he's ever seen comes into view. A man in a cage full of bananas. To Zamir, cages mean one thing. The Jaipur's monkey catcher, Dana Lal, could be close. But the rest of the troop don't seem worried at all. Instead, they sit and wait. Zamir is baffled. He arrived in the country in a cage, but he didn't have any bananas to keep him company. This lucky man has hundreds, and it looks like there's no way even the best monkey thief can get to them. But Zamir has learned to trust the country troops' judgment. If they choose to wait, so shall he. If only he knew what for. Back at the fruit market, Bipin spots something strange too. A motorized mincing machine demands further investigation. The gang's queen, Jaya, and several others follow his lead. Bipin is the monkey of the moment after his success finding the market. They approach the contraption with caution. It devours sugarcane stalks. And what it spits out looks delicious. Sugarcane juice. It's one of the sweetest drinks on earth. The seller sees he has a fresh crowd of monkey customers and is happy to give away free samples. Queen Jaya wants the first sip. The juice is packed with carbohydrates and gives Jaya a big boost of energy. She takes her treat well away from prying eyes. Or so she thinks. Her partner, Devden, wants a taste too. Devden still can't see any sign of a rival troop. With a feast of food within easy reach, and now a complimentary drink service too, could this be the home the Splinter Group have been searching for? On the other side of town, the Gulta Gang elite relax. 
Isha scours the grounds, hoping to find someone handing out snacks. But she's out of luck. Everyone she can see is taking a nap. But that won't stop her. <laughs> Isha might be a princess, but she's not too posh to pick a pocket. But she's never heard snoring before. She steals her nerves and creeps in close for a second attempt. Isha turns one man's dreams into a nightmare. A safe distance away, she inspects her loot. But all she finds are a few scraps of paper. Rupees are no use to her. However, the pilfering princess hasn't given up. There are plenty more sleepy people to target in this exciting new playground. As Isha looks for her next victim, she sees a mob of mean-looking macaques sneaking into the park. She doesn't recognize them, but she definitely recognizes danger. Back in the country, Zamir is grumpy and confused. He's been sitting with the troop for over an hour and nothing's happened. The man's still inside his cage with his bananas and he hasn't eaten a single one. The squeal of brakes distracts Zamir from his rumbling stomach. A lucky lorry driver bags a big bunch of bananas. But the troop seem to know something exciting is about to happen. Samir can sense it too. This is why they've been sitting here like statues all morning. Some lorry drivers spend so much time in their vehicles they don't have the chance to visit temples and pay their respects to Hanuman. So they feed the troops living along the edges of India's highways instead. Zamir hasn't been hand-fed food like this since he lived at Gulta Temple. He didn't choose to come to the country, but now he's here, he loves it. Back at the fruit market, life looks good for the Splinter Group, too. All the tension of recent times seems to have vanished. Even Devdon looks content now. He's not seen any other monkey mobs all day. It looks like no rival troop controls the market after all. Devdan's never claimed a territory before, but there's always a first time. The Splinter Group's days living rough in the city are over. At long last, they have a home of their own. In the city park, it looks like Rani's found a safe place to call home too.
she feels like a queen again. But in one split second, everything changes. She hears a blood-curdling sound. Rani rushes to investigate the source of the noise with other members of the gang. But what she sees stops her dead in her tracks. If Rani wondered why such a luxury location hadn't already been claimed by another troop, now she can see why. Around 200 rage-fueled macaques square up to each other on the west wall. The park is the overlapping territory of two huge gangs. Rani and the Gulta Gang elite are in the middle of a battleground. Kamal has seen enough and sneaks away. Rani and the rest of the gang freeze with fear at the sight of such a huge offensive. A large male loses its grip and disappears under a sea of rivals. The standoff turns savage. Only the intervention of a park warden saves the victim from a horrifying end. Rani runs for her life, so do the rest of her gang. The dream of a new home is shattered. For the Gulta Gang elite, it's back to the harsh reality of life on the streets. Back at the fruit market, trade is clear up after another busy day. But the splinter group are still at work. There are treats to be found, even among the rubbish. As darkness falls, Bipin and the gang prepare for their first night in their new home. They know just where they'll find breakfast tomorrow. It's been a long time since they had that luxury. On the other side of the city, the Gulta Gang elite have no such luck. Kamal cowers in the background. Rani clutches her son TJ anxiously to her chest. She can see her sisters glare at her with growing discontent. Like all macaque troops, the support of the sisterhood is vital for Rani to maintain power. Hiding in the shadows with no food or roof overhead is no way to win their votes. Rani needs to come up with a solution to the gang's problems soon. Or her royal head could roll. Next time on Monkey Thieves, Rani and the Gulta Gang elite resort to breaking and entering in an effort to survive. Zamir gets much more than he bargained for when he sneaks into a lorry. And life gets tougher for Jaipur's monkey thieves when monkey catchers hit the streets en masse.